All right, everybody. My turn. Hit it. Hello everyone and welcome to the first of hopefully many hijackings of my husband's channel. Now some of you may be wondering, why have I disposed of the man I love in mysterious and possibly dangerous ways? Because a crime has been committed, that's why. The crime of not talking enough about Pokemon. And that's where I come in. I've been playing Pokemon since 1997. I have at one point or another owned every single Pokemon title, I have more plushies than is probably healthy, and I am the queen of Pokemon in this household! Yeah, this channel is late to the Poke bandwagon, but I'm here to fix that with today's non-traditional list. The best and worst gym leaders slash island challenge captains from the main series games. I'm doing it this way because I'm here to shake things up, and since Hubbykins is known for his countdowns, I'ma do it my I'm going to lay out who I think are the best and worst from each generation of the main games only. I will be basing my judgments based on personality, difficulty in the context of the games, the Pokemon slash movesets they have, design of both the leader and the gym, interactions outside of battle, reward, and representation across all versions. Unfortunately, the anime will not play into the selection since A, I only ever watched Johto, and B, the leaders are very different from their game counterparts. So as much as I would love to talk about Sabrina, Misty, Brock, Ceylon, I'm not including anime appearances. I'll talk about the best first and then the worst, and hopefully I can do a good enough job that I won't get a lynch mob outside our apartment. Again. So without any further ado, grab your free <coughs> potion from your PC, kiss your mama goodbye, register your bike, and let's do this thing! I don't think anyone is really going to be surprised who the best Kanto gym leader is but I'm here to do a job that I assigned to myself and I'm going to do it right. Blue is the eighth gym leader of Kanto in the Generation 2 games, their remakes, and weirdly the Let's Go games, so he totally counts. Cerebi.net agrees with me too. Yeah, he's a pretty good gym leader when you go fight him in the rematches in Let's Go. Mega Charizard because of course! But he truly shines in the Generation 2 games. Just like when he was champion, he made fighting through everything you have to go through worth it. He's still just as arrogant and jerky as before, but the two years since his defeat at the hands of Red have mellowed him out a little. He has matured, though not enough to not abandon the gym and leave trainers hanging all the time. I love gym leaders in battles that don't stick to a particular type or style of Pokemon, so him bringing out his old buddies from your adventure with him through Gen 1 just... Mwah! Oh, it stirs my soup, y'all. And while the gym is a little bland... Lego blocks, dude. Are you Emmett in disguise or something? He more than makes up for it with his personality, for better or worse. His Pokemon selection, and his growth throughout the games. Mega Charizard! Why is it always Charizard?! <laughs> Grass types get a bad rap. They're weak to five things on their own, and even more when they are commonly paired with Poison type. Before the physical special split, they were almost a joke. The leader who did not help that perception was Erica. Design-wise, she's fine. She's lovely and soft-spoken and cute and whatever, <laughs> but when you stack her up against the other forces of personality that are the rest of the Kanto gym leaders, it's like, Erica who? Let's look at what we know. She's a famous flower arranger, because that's a job. It's Japan, don't question it. She may be a little narcoleptic or just affected by all the fumes that she has going around her gym. She has only girl trainers in her gym, and she only collects attractive Pokemon, and I hate her now. I know I'm not supposed to look at the anime, but the trait of no boys allowed in her gym actually does transfer over to her gym trainers. Also, honey, my Pokemon are solely of the grass type. You got a Victory Bell, Vile Plume, Gloom, Jump Pluff, Shift Tree, Roserade. Liar! Liar! Solely my fanny. Maybe I should get you a dictionary. Also, thanks for the super weak TM Mega Drain and the low PP TM Giga Drain. Super helpful. When I was replaying Heart Gold Soul Silver, I can't tell you how many times I forgot about her. She's that bland. And then when I found her, I remembered, oh yeah, she's an anti Y chromosome fibber. Next. <laughs> Generation 2's Crystal Version was my favorite game of all time for 18 years until Fire Emblem Dimitri's house, I mean, three houses, stole that title. I have three copies of the remake games. I still play them. Generation 2 is my bay. Fight me. So who is my favorite gym leader from my favorite generation? Is it the sweet steel type leader who tends to sick Pokemon? Is it the dignified old veteran who has let his heart freeze like his team? Nope, it's the ghost loving pseudo cryptozoologist fourth gym leader, Morty. 
Quick, Morty, you gotta turn into a car. Now, I'm ready for the people wondering what the heck I'm thinking. Ari, he only has one ghost type family. He should at least have a Miss Dreamus or something. And to that I say, I agree. But that's literally the only bad thing about him. Unlike some other gym leaders who are kind of a BS level of challenge. Uh, the, the, the Morty's challenge comes from strategy instead of flat out difficulty or poor planning or design. Ghost types only have two weaknesses, dark type and themselves, and poison has psychic and ground type. Now the likelihood of you having a viable dark type is nearly non-existent. You could have a Haunter or Gengar of your own, but that would leave you vulnerable, as would a psychic type. And in the remakes, his Pokemon have levitate, so there goes the ground type. Morty, despite his simplicity, makes you think about what you're going to do to beat him. The only other gym leader in Johto who I think does that is Claire. But she's a bitter Betty and can't take a loss. So Morty takes the ethereal cake. And that's just his Pokemon. His design is very good, lending him an air of mystery. And his gym is designed well too. From a befuddling invisible wall puzzle in the original to a candlelit precarious walk in the remake, you get a sense of moreness with him. He's even described as the mystic seer of the future. Something you really don't see from a ghost type leader all that often. Usually it's reserved for leaders like Sabrina, Olympia, and Tate and Liza, not a ghost leader. He's just fascinating. He's an archaeologist, he loves his city, he's knowledgeable, he's a fair challenge, and all around he's just a swell guy. It almost makes up for the- Oh no. Okay, y'all get ready for the tea on this pink haired bitch! First off, let's start with the only positive quality I think she has. The gym itself. The shrubberies and walls are in the shape of a clefairy. Cute. Clever, moving on, I hate her. First off, she's another anti-Y Cromer for her gym trainers. Guys can't be beautiful or cute too? <sighs> because I've seen some drag queens and they are prettier than my entire existence. Ugh, whatever. They're all pretty blase da anyways. I could clean them up with just a couple scratches and some extra cash from their meows. No big. Then we get to Miss Prim and Pointy Piggy Tails herself and God have mercy on your save file. Her Clefairy has metronome, which is, of course, a few flavors of bull, but if Orange Jesus is on your side, you can skate by just fine. Clefairy is not the problem. Almost forgettable. But then... <sighs> Let me set the stage. It's early 2000 and your wee little seven-year-old Ari playing her new Pokemon game. You pick the cute little fire mouse that evolved into a fire... Weasel? Mm. You have a Pidgeotto because you loved Pidgeot from when you played Red. You have a Gastly because your friend promised to trade with you for a Gengar later. You just swept through Whitney's entire gym. All your Pokemon are level 16 through 19. You are feeling good. She has a Clefairy? Pfft, no biggie. Bye-bye. Then it happens. Roll out. This son of a carrot stick cow has roll out. Why was it a super effective hit? Normal is not super effective on my Quilava. It's not super effective on anything. Everyone is down. I never lost. Mom, why did I die? Yeah, see, Rollout was a brand new move in Generation 2, and no one knew what type it was going into this gym. It's a normal gym. Not freaking rock type! Because why on Pelor's Green Alatastica would a normal type gym leader have a rock type signature move? It was perhaps the most unfair thing to ever happen to Pokemon at that point. Then of course, this bovine has Stop, which has the chance to make you flinch, and it hurts even more if you've used Minimize. Attract, which makes your male Pokemon next to useless because you can't have lesbian Pokemon. And Milk Drink, which means that even if you somehow survive Rollout enough to hit Mil Tank a couple times, it can still heal itself! I hate her, I hate the incredibly pretty girl, and that she has the flopping ovaries to start crying and almost deny me my badge! It took me. No joke! 11 tries to win. And then she couldn't give me my badge. I'm the one who should be crying, give me my money and let me leave! I think I popped a blood vessel, give me a minute. If Disney has an unhealthy relationship with the Dead Mother Society, the Japan has an unhealthy relationship with the Missing Sperm Donors Club. Dads are sometimes mentioned, but never seen. Until now. Yeah, this is the predictable choice, but Norman changed the game in a lot of ways. It was the first time you had a second parent. What? The first time that items were a prominent part of the gym's layout, and the first good normal gym we got. Low bar, but still. Norman is different, and that at least earns some sort of recognition. But why the best? Because not only is his gym structured differently, and would not have anything like it repeated until Galar's challenges, not only is his team challenging in a good way, 
Not only is the gym's design actually really elegant in the Oros remakes, but this fight is personal. Norman is the first gym leader you feel personally obligated to beat. I mean, blue in the second gen, kinda, but that's like secondhand obligation. Because it's your dad. He tells you to go away and come back stronger. He wants you to be better. He wants you to come at him with everything you've got. And when you do, he has that happy, sad pride thing that all good fathers have when you've succeeded or surpassed them. Or you could take it a completely different direction. He uprooted your life, moved you to a little town two routes away from where he works, tells you to go away, and doesn't spend any time with you or your mother. He literally ditches your mother for the meteor shower, even though it's kind of an anniversary thing. Rude! Beating him could be satisfying, like you're taking out your aggression on him, or use him as a proxy for your own parents. Norman, like most normal types, is up for interpretation. Do with him what you will. There was no need for this guy to be here. Why? Why, Emerald? Why did you take away Steven, put Wallace in his place, and then give us Juan? There was no reason whatsoever. He's really kind of the redheaded stepchild here, and he's being poked at because of a bad decision on the developer's part. But I can't get over it. I really can't. Juan was a mistake. This foppish, floozy, flirty flap gets on my nerves. The leaders before him are all interesting and diverse, and when you get to him and you hear there's a different water gym leader, you get excited, thinking you'll get something new. Nope, it's basically just a mega evolved Wallace with a Casanova complex. His team is... eh. Love disc? Really? Can't even get a free heart scale? Useless. Celio and Whiskash? Okay, pretty decent. Alright, alright. Crawdont? Aw, oh, yeah, boy! Now we talking! Water dark! Woo! But why? For all that is holy, doesn't he have a Hoenn-based Trump Pokemon? This region is 73.648% water! What the actual Atlantis, Game Freak? <sighs> My reasons, I admit, are kind of superficial. He's the product of a bad judgment call. Emerald would have been just fine without replacing Steven, without moving Wallace up, and without Juan. If Juan didn't exist, this spot would go to Winona because she's kind of bland. But since he does exist, congratulations! Juan is somehow worse than you. Known fact, thanks to my wonderful hubby and his bestie Lunacorva, I have become incredibly interested in a new form of entertainment. Professional wrestling. It has action, drama, ham, violence, ham, man diapers, mystery, and did I mention ham? To those of you who say it's fake, so are movies and TV shows, so if y'all can stand in line for seven hours to get tickets to the next Marvel movie, I can watch two sweaty beefcakes throw themselves around in a square, okay? Okay. Anyways, you've probably deduced that I mean none other than Crash or Wake. What makes him the best? Because not only does he embody the new physical special split to its fullest, he embodies the spirit of wrestling to its fullest. Water was just a special type before Gen 4, so the introduction of physical water moves was a pivotal and a godsend to certain prior Pokemon like Crawdont, Feraligatr, and Poliwrath. And Crash or Wake puts these new advantages to good use with a mix of both physical and special moves, making sure that both sides' advantages and disadvantages are taken care of. His team in Platinum is especially vicious with the resilient Quagsire that knew Yawn, his Gyarados, which is normally a physical monster anyways, and his signature Floatzel with Ice Fang that could cripple the grass type that you would need in order to make a dent on that Quagsire. Crash or Wake is about fun. He doesn't take himself too seriously. He is excited to battle any challenger that comes his way. He encourages you when you're doing well. And when he's beaten, he'll just say that he wants more. That's the spirit of wrestling. You don't always win, but you have a lot of fun doing it and putting on a show. Then you get up and do it again, win or lose. Even other generations know he's amazing, as there are references to him in other games. He's even based on real-life luchadores, especially Frey Tormenta, and, in my opinion, the legendary El Santo. Crusher Wake's personality and energy put him as the best of Sinnoh. His excellent team are just icing on the cake. Oh, by the way, did I mention that he goes in alone to make sure a bomb threat was cleared? This dude is hardcore. <laughs> Generation 4 is remembered mostly for the physical special split, arguably the best villain team that we've ever gotten, and the first Dark and Ghost-type legendaries. 
at least those are the positive traits that people remember. One of the negative traits that folks remember, though, is Fontina. This French fancy is easily the most difficult gym leader in the region, and I'm not sure whether or not she was supposed to be. She's a ghost-type gym leader who isn't all obsessed with dead things. Cool. And she loves participating in contests. All right, a gym leader you can interact with outside of the gym. Testing the waters, are we, Game Freak? But that's where my compliments end. Fontina is insanely tough to beat. First off, Generation 4 seems to have a similar problem to Generation 2 in that leveling up was a little tricky. So unless you grind yourself into the ground, you are likely going to be underleveled or underpowered for this fight. What's more, she uses the new physical special split to her advantage. And unlike Crash or Wake, she doesn't make it very fair. For those who don't know, Ghost used to be a physical type. And those of us who were going into Diamond and Pearl raw were floored when our super beefy defensive Pokemon were being swept away by the ghost type moves. Then, each of her Pokemon have a surprise we weren't prepared for. Drifloon's Aftermath took down Pokemon who barely managed to make a dent in it. Gengar had Levitate, so those of us who were banking on using ground type moves to take advantage of that poison subtype were SOL. And Miss Magus. Y'all, I literally had to fight her five times before I managed to take her down. And every single time, my team was swept by this Wicked Witch of the Worst's Shadow Ball. It has 80 power, which is already pretty hefty for a third gym, but it also has a 20% chance of lowering your special defense. So, if you manage to survive one, you sure as heck ain't surviving again. But Ari, I hear you bleat. Why is she so terrible? I'll tell you, she's so smug. I could handle the strong Pokemon in the tacky fashion, but her attitude in the games always came off as the stereotypical French superiority. Oh, <laughs> finally, you have arrived. Yeah, lady, maybe if your elevators moved faster, you wouldn't have to wait for the peasant. Incidentally, Fontina, the hot home gym leader, also happens to be a contest expert. And you may ask yourself, how do I know this? Well, I am Fontina. Little fool of yourself there, aren't you, sweets? And, uh, so it shall be that you challenge me, but I shall win, because that is what a gym leader does, no? Not on my watch, lady. <laughs> okay, maybe that is what a gym leader does, what do I know? Gen 5 is the middle child generation. It's the region time kind of left behind. Which is sad. The story is great, the rivals are pretty boss and go along with the themes. Unova finally gave bug Pokemon some friggin' respect, and Oshawott exists. To that end, though, I only ever hear about two gym leaders, maybe three, and neither of them were my choice for this list. So who is it? Who is special enough to get over this slump? Hello, Nobody is going to agree with me on this, but hear me out! Roxy was the gym leader I was waiting for. A lot of previous gym leaders tried to give off the air that they were tough and we shouldn't mess with them, like Volkner or Brawly. But I don't believe them as much as I believe in Roxy. If Joan Jett and Shirley Ann Manson had a white-haired baby that got Dimension Hop to Unova, BAM! It's Roxy! She's the first poison gym leader we'd had since Koga, and she just oozes the part. Well, Koga and Janine, whatever. Her outfit and attitude wouldn't pin her as anything else, and even her Pokemon in all three difficulties suit her to a T. To be honest, her Pokemon are the weakest part of the gym with only one poison type from the Unova region. Really? No trubbish? Or did the controversy catch up to you and you all realized how stupid it is? But I don't really care because they aren't bad, just nothing special. The rest of her whole existence is. Her gym trainers are her bandmates. She's singing when you walk in. Her gym is an underground punk rock club from the Manchester scene or CBGB in the late 80s. It was a missing part of the New York City inspired region and I'm so, 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 so happy she was included. Aside from being balls manglingly difficult or just kind of offensive, the worst thing you can be in a Pokemon game is forgettable. And even though the whole region is kind of forgettable, which sucks, I can at least give you a rundown of most of the gym leaders. Basic white boys. Back streets, back, all right! First black gym leader, Cherry Bomb! You're fabulous. I'm fabulous! Supermodel and motivational speaker. Money, 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 must be funny. Pilot with awkward hair and cannons. Baby Durgan champion. Beef dragon. Hey, you're like the Waterman. Did any of you notice who I was missing? Anyone? Yeah, the ice guy. Nothing against him, he's just kind of there as Leader 7. 
he has one super cool moment where he can see the shadow triad when no one else can see them. That's kind of neat. But he's so quiet and doesn't really interact with you much. Nothing stands out. He's Jim. Yay, another ice puzzle. His design, an all blue kabuki outfit? Is that it? I don't even know, and I feel bad for dismissing it. But after Price and Candace, he's really kind of lackluster. Bryson is honestly more charismatic once he gives up his gym and serves as your on again slash off again co star in the Pokestar Studios movies as Bryson Man and Mecha Cop. How a stoic guy like that pulls off such goofy roles, I'll never know. Yeah, this entry isn't as vitriolic as I have been, but sometimes just blah leads to more blah. Sorry, fellas, I'll try and be more pissy next time. <laughs> A soft spot for children, I really do. I participated in community junior theater for over a decade, I was a substitute teacher for years, I worked in juvenile corrections, I was even in the credential program to become a full-fledged teacher. I love kids and I'm excited to eventually get to be a mom. So when I see a kid, or in this case a pair of siblings, embody what I hope and pray my child or children will be like, it makes my day. Clement is a hard-working prodigy and a pillar of the Lumios community, along with being a doting big brother and a trainer passionate about recognizing the Pokemon's strength, not just the trainers. And I adore this little pseudo Sundari Babu and his little sister. Ooh, so cute! Clement's team is pretty balanced, and the Kalos edition is absolutely brilliant. I love Helioptile and Heliolisk. I swear they saved my life on my Kalos run. So to see him use Heliolisk made me very happy. He does get a couple points off for the Emolga though, stupid flying shock squirrel. <laughs> I must admit that X and Y are the games I've actually played the least. Not because I dislike them, but because they got overshadowed by other things going on in my life when I first got them. And Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But Clement is the one gym leader I remember with sheer clarity. And I have to give a few bonus points for the inclusion of Bonnie. Not very many gym leaders have a manager slash valet slash sideman throughout the whole gym, but she's a cute and very intelligent addition to the gym. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble telling which one of them is the genius. Hey, wait, where are these kids' parents? Who lost their kids? How dare you, they're the best kids! Okay, I said I'd try and be pissy for the next one, but honestly, Olympia ain't worth it. She's so, so existent. She's functional. She takes up that space and has weird hair. Oh, what's that? An interesting trait? Better give her a stupid signature Pokemon so far into the game. Really, guys? A meow stick? After like three battles with Callum or Serena? Calum? Callum? California? Ah. We know it's weak sauce. Give us something better. Was Malamar too interesting? Of course that's the reason. This lady's boring! Teleport switches in a little pocket dimension. Woo, been there, done that. Can I get a refund on this movie? It's boring. Boring! <laughs> Alola is a little hard to judge since you don't usually directly fight the leader. You go through their weird trial and then fight the totem Pokemon, which granted, the captain usually either trained or had a hand in training. So how do you judge who is the best of the Alola gym leaders when they don't really have them? Personality! Not everybody has one. Yes, Plastique, and we will get to that one later, but right now I'm going to talk about the perkiest little possible dead girl Alola has to offer. That's right, it's Acerola. Ace Rola? Acerola? Ace it is. Ace is the captain of the ghost type trial on Melee. Molly? Melee Island. Taking place in an abandoned supermarket. What am I even looking at? What am I saying? This is, well, well it's different, I'll give her that. And her total Pokemon is my favorite Pokemon from Alola, Mimikyu. If you are not ready for Mimi, you are gonna have a bad time. Yes, my husband cringed in his sleep. Disguise gives it a free hit, Astonish can, and probably will, make you flinch, and the ally Pokemon can put you to sleep. Not to mention the fact that Mimikyu is a physical attacker, so for those of us going in with special defense in mind, good luck. But despite my undying love for the lonely Pika wannabe, I'm here to sing Ace's praises. I can't think of a bad thing to say about her. She's helpful, she pops up when you need her, she takes care of children at Aether House, she keeps her grunkle in line, and she's perhaps one of the more formidable members of the eventual Elite Four. And my personal theory? I think she's either dead or a ghost, which would make total sense for a ghost type wrangler. I mean, think about it. Her uncle is depressed, maybe because she and his brother, her like royalty dad, died. And seeing her all the time everywhere makes it worse, hence why he's so grumpy. But we'll always listen to her. She's also dressed in rags and can tell old stories. Maybe her spirit has decayed with time and being dead gives her knowledge of the afterlife and the past. 
Okay, I need to stop before I go all Alex Jones on this. Yikes. Oh, 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 okay. Remember the clip? Remember this clip? This clip right here? Personality. Not everybody has one. Yeah, it's for this girl right here. Mina. She likes to paint. Cool. What else you got? Flaky, kind of shallow, lackadaisical. Wow, I kind of hate her more than I probably should. I mean, look at all, all of the other captains are kahunas. They all work hard to make their challenges special, intense, or a combination of the two. Mina just... Look, how many bong hits did you take before I got here? You can be honest with me, I can take it. There's a difference between apathy and complete disregard for responsibility. Nanu is the former, but he still does his job, watching out for Team Skull and taking care of the island. Mina is just not present. She abandons the duties given to her. Mina runs off, paints, comes back to eat her parents out of house and home, then disappears again. <sighs> Laziness, especially in a place of responsibility, really irks me. If I understand correctly, the tapu of each island only chooses the kahuna, and the kahunas choose the captains. And that means Hapu's grandpa chose Mina. This means that Mina was chosen by a respected member of the community who passed away, and she still can't bring herself to be a competent trial captain. That does kind of make it worse for me. But that also means that Hapu can fire her, so get to it, short stack. Yes, she kind of gets her act together for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. A flower petal hunt, which is fine. She even has a totem Pokemon, a Rebombi, which suits her to a T. But I can't get the disrespectful flavor out of my mouth from my initial encounter with her. I wanted a fairy trial. I love the fairy type. And Alola had some really amazing additions to the roster. All we got in the first iteration was, oh, hey, there, yeah. Yeah, here you go, enjoy kiddo, Farium Z. <sighs> nope, not cool. If any of you watched Josh and I play through Pokemon Shield, you will already know who my favorite gym leader from Galar is. While I do have a soft spot for Fire Father-in-Law and Thick Ice Mama, and I agree with the general consensus that Nessa is gorgeous and well-designed, my Broadway baby, purple-loving, quiz-happy heart beats only for Opal. I want to be this feisty when I get to be 88. I, I mean 16. Seriously, this ninja granny just sneaks up on you at the strangest of times, says something strangely profound, gives you a lead card, and then just dips out. Slowly. I can't wrap my mind around how much I love her. She took over the gym 70 gosh dang years ago, and she's still passionate about Pokemon to the point where she does not accept anyone who she would deem unworthy to succeed her. How does she know? She sees the pink. No, I don't know what exactly pink is, but anyone who could take Bead under their wing, care for him when no one else will, and turn him into a somewhat respectable member of society has to earn quite a bit of admiration. Yeah, that's right. Right when Rose and Oleana ditch him after using him, Opal swoops in and gives him another chance to make something of himself. As long as he doesn't mind working hard for it. She sees potential in people. She looks deeper, like a real good granny. And I haven't even gotten to her gym! Her whole gym is the audition process to succeed her as leader, which the theater geek in me loves. She's waiting for you on the pitch, still somehow faster than you. What? waiting to give you your final test. And her Pokemon. Her Mawile is kind of laughable, but Togekiss and Weezing can present a challenge since both are kind of tanky, and Togekiss can raise its stats with ancient power. And Alchemy's Dyna Giganta Ginormal Max form is beautiful and makes me hungry. I think she's my favorite gym leader of all time. So much personality, really funny, supportive, satisfying gym in battle, and just adopt me, Nana Opal! I want to have the pink! Okay, I'm going to be honest. Galar has one of the best gym leader lineups we've seen in a long time. So I don't enjoy calling anyone from Sword and Shield the worst gym leader. For the most part, the leaders are very charismatic, well-designed, and their challenges are fun and interesting. Sure, we've seen a water switch puzzle before, but the Wooloo herding and the audition surely make up for that slight repetition. So who gets the dishonor of being arbitrarily named worst of Galar? After careful deliberation, it honestly has to be B. Let me get into why. 
B is only in Sword, which gives you less time to get to know her if you didn't choose that game. But the same goes for Gordy, Melanie, and Alistair. Well, let's do some compare and contrast. We have Melanie, a plus size representing helicopter mom, ice type gym leader with a great team featuring three new Pokemon and a beefy Lapras. We have Alistair, who's basically the Pearl Jam song Jeremy mixed with Paranorman, and I love it. There's Gordy, who honestly was so close to taking this spot due to his lackluster personality, but his gym challenge and the latter half of his team saved him. And then B. She sears her gym challenge with Alistair with just a palette swap, but it sucks, so who cares? B is a young girl who enjoys the fighting type and trains super hard. Yes, she has strict parents and she doesn't like people knowing she eats sweets. Hi, Lysithia, fancy meeting you here. But that's it? And it's not like it comes into play in her dialogue. I mean, she speaks a little formally, but meh. Also, we've had a cute little girl who trains super hard and likes fighting types. Did everyone forget about Maylene and Lucario? Did they forget that that was a thing? Ugh. But what solidifies B here is her team. She only has one Galar Pokemon. One. Most of the other gym leaders, even if they don't use a Galar Pokemon as their trump card, have at least two. But she only has Surfetched. And he's not even her Dynamax candidate. Honestly, it's just kind of forgettable. She's fine, okay, she's not bad. But standing in a room with all the other colorful leaders, or even with her Pokemon all lined up, I would kind of forget she's there. And that's it! That's everything! Phew! Now, I'm aware that every gym leader is someone's favorite, so I know I'm not going to please everyone. And that's okay! I love hearing from you all. No, I don't stalk the comment section. Stop looking at me like that. Anyways, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs>